Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life i can assure you your christian life will move up a notch you will never be the same the title knowing jesus more knowing jesus more I think um, Darlene Sheck, when she was still with Hill Song, sang a song along that line. May I know Jesus more and more, come live in me all my life, take over. So tonight, I just want us to um, explore this path of knowing Jesus more. I'd like to take my text, it's a long one, or I'll read from Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, I'll read from verse 9 to verse 29. That's from verse 9 to the end of that chapter. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9 to verse 29. Are you there in your Bibles? Hello, friends. Are you there in your Bibles? All right. So Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9. For this reason, we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and convey us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image, the visible expression of the invisible God. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in us, excuse me, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him, Jesus, and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether, you, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. 
if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you had, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister, and now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I have become a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of, his, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end, I also labor, striving according to his walking, which works in me mightily. Powerful passage. My concern as we study the life of Jesus and get to know him more also has to do with the season in which we live. Normally in the calendar of the church, universal, we are in a period called the Lenten season. Uh, when over a period of 40 days, a solemn observation of is made amongst the saints, culminating in the season that marks the betrayal, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And so as we get into this season, what some people call Easter, uh, I feel it's important that we hang around Jesus and study his life and his manner of life so that we may know in the language of Dr. Luke, the beloved physician who wrote the gospel according to Luke, the gospel of Jesus according to Luke, and also wrote Acts of the Apostles. He said in Luke chapter 1, when you read from verse 1 to verse 4, but I'm interested in verse 4. He said that you may know the certainty of the things in which you are instructed. That you may know. This is a word not just to Theophilus. Theophilus, paraventure you don't know, comes from, I mean, the meaning of Theophilus means friend of God. Philos comes from the root word friend. Theo comes from the root Greek word, I mean, which is God. Theo, God. Philos, root word for friend. And you have different levels of friendships. So, Theophilos meaning friend of God. Hello, friends. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. And though it was a letter, I mean, the gospel written to disciple a public figure, a civil leader, a leader in the marketplace, a government official, it has prophetic imports to every Christian who will be discipled better in the way of the Lord. Because it means, I mean, the gospel means the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in that um, book, according to Luke. So the interest of Luke is not just literally or contextually that man, government official, Theophilus. The prophetic import is to everyone who will come into such a depth of relationship with God. And what, what do we mean by depth of relationship? There are different levels of relationships. The relationship between a man and his wife, 
a relationship between siblings, among siblings, a relationship between a boss and the staff at work, a relationship between a steward, a driver, and their boss, a relationship between parents and their children. And for these relationships, we have our ways of describing them, sisters, spouses, uh, um, boss, employee, and all that. But for every relationship, there is a highest level of relationship. Or put it in another way, the deepest level of relationship where there is so much at stake, there is so much value, there is so much regard. The highest level, or if you like it, the deepest level of a relationship is when a relationship becomes a friendship. When brothers are not just brothers, sisters are not just sisters, they, are, they regard each other as friends. When a husband and wife can step beyond the uh, casual expression of husband and wife, daddy of my children, mommy of my children, and you step it up to the level of friendship, that is the highest level of, friend, of relationship a man can have. And the scriptures corroborate this. You will see when God stepped up his relationship with Abraham, stepped up his relationship, I think, with Moses, he called them friends. You will see also in the Gospels as Jesus was rounding up his earthly ministry, in John chapter 15, I think from verse 12, he said, Hitherto I have called you slaves, but no longer do I call you slaves or servants. He said, But now I call you friends. He said, Because a slave or a servant does not know what his master does. Basically, speaking of it literally, it's like a slave or servant who comes, walks around the house, tidies the bedroom, tidies everywhere, but at the end of the day, goes back to maybe the boy's quarters or somewhere in the distance to his own home. But a friend might be able to share the intimacy of the same bed with that friend. Do you understand that? Do you understand that, friends? So scriptures make us to recognize that the highest level of a relationship is friendship. Sometimes we think we see friendship as a loose thing. Oh, that guy is my friend. And then behind the person's back, we backstab, we backbite. But the highest level in the sight of God in the understanding of scriptures is friendship. That is why he wrote, I mean, in a prophetic sense, he said, this I write to you, Theophilus. So, um, likewise to every one of us, there is a Theophilus in the sight of God in every, one of God in every one of us, where we can come to that depth of intimacy, that level of relationship where God is free to open up certain things to you. You see, when he started to regard Abraham as friend, he was going to visit another nation, bring judgment to another nation, have a verdict and opinion about the nation that had been reported to him. But he went through Abraham's courtyard, ate in the place, and as he was going, he said, shall I hide that which I do from Abraham, seeing that he will become this and he will become that, he will instruct his household. So, in every one of us in the sight of God, there is a Theophilus, someone who can become a friend of God, someone who can become deep in his relationship, someone whom God can trust with the secret of nations. You will see in the text we read in Colossians, he started to talk about things that have been mysteries from ages past, now being revealed to the saints. He said, and this is why God called him, Paul, the apostle, to reveal these things, to unveil these things, so that we can be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. So like I said, in the language of Dr. Luke, Luke chapter 1 verse 4, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you are instructed. As a believer, you must know what you believe. As a believer in Jesus, you, there must be clarity. There must be certainty. There must be deep-seated conviction in the things you believe. And um, these are some of the reasons why I want to spend this period climaxing in the season of his resurrection. I want us to hang around Jesus Study him so that we may know Jesus more. Hello friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Explores His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions, 
and apply the truth content to your life, I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Having said that, what is the purpose of this study? Why do we need to know Jesus more? And I'd like to enumerate some things here. It is to generate a hunger for a deeper walk with Jesus. Like I started to say earlier, uh, friendship with Christ, friendship with Jesus, is not like the casual uh, platonic friendship that we just handle casually in a moment we forget. One moment we say, you are my best friend. The next moment, I'm not willing to make sacrifices. But in this case, we want us to know Jesus more. We want us to get to understand him better. Whether you're a pastor or a deacon or a leader in the local assembly where you belong to or you're a new convert, the interest, the, why we're stirring up our interest to know Jesus better, study, I mean, to know Jesus more, study his life is so that we may generate a hunger for a deeper walk with Jesus. I desire in every believer, and not just my desire, it's the desire that it's a desire in the heart of God that every one of his children will come into an intimate walk, an intimate fellowship, intimate relationship where the content of his heart can be poured into the recesses of our hearts, the content of our hearts can be accessible to him. The Bible says, deep calls to the deep. In the book of the Psalms, it said, deep calls to the deep at the noise of the waterfalls. So the interest of God, why he will have us to study Jesus, study his son, study this pattern son, is so that we come into an intimate relationship, a deeper walk with God. Furthermore, why study? What's the purpose for knowing Jesus better? What's the purpose for studying Jesus? It's to make both the Christians... And the observers, you know, there's a segment of the church, they, they use such language as seeker sensitive, user friendly. Personally, I don't believe in that concept of Christianity. I don't believe that um, the, the church should be seeker sensitive, that otherwise we will lose identity. Anyone who wants to come to Jesus, he said, must believe that he is. So the church does not pander to the desire of the seeker. The seeker can be an occult person who wants to retain his occult status and embrace Jesus if that is possible. The seeker can be someone given to pornography who wants to retain the pornography lifestyle and then also have Jesus with a or same-sex um, practitioner who wants to have. So when we talk about seeker-sensitive, user-friendly, it does not really project the totality of God and his purpose for his church. But here, in case we have such seekers, that as we begin to bring understanding from God's word and the Holy Spirit begins to bring life to the things shared, we can bring to both the Christian and the seeker or the observer an understanding of God's purpose for sending his son. Why Jesus had to come into the world, why the son of God had to become the son of man, why he had to go all the way to the cross and die one of the most humiliating forms of death. So we need to study Jesus. We need to know Jesus more so that we can know the reason for things, the certainty of the things in which we are instructed. Furthermore, why do we need to study Jesus and know him better? I wrote here in my notes, to make disciples of the followers of Jesus. You know, you can be following and you are not a disciple. Even it came at a time in the life of Peter, who had been a disciple for three and a half years, he was following, but not with the heart of a disciple. By the time Jesus had been betrayed and was taken to Pilate's court, Peter was following, but not as a disciple. That was why they could say, but you are one of them. He said, no, there's nothing like that. He said, but even your speech betrays you. It's people from Galilee, where that man came from, and all his close associates who speak like this. And he started to swear and to curse. Why? Because at that point in time, he was still following, but he had lost the discipleship status momentarily. He was following at a distance. One, the other one who wrote the book of John, John the beloved apostle, had so much confidence, even though Pilate caught, he was willing to follow Jesus in there. He entered casually and majestically. 
He was even the one saying, allow Peter, let him come in. Peter followed at the distance. I'm saying to us here, trying to establish on a third level why we need to study Jesus, know Jesus more, that as a follower of Jesus, you don't just remain as a follower because you can be a casual follower. You can just be a Sunday, Sunday Christian, have no sense of commitment, have no sense of seriousness, have no drive to be intimate, have no drive to step up your relationship. So that when we study the life of Jesus, we study the price he paid, we study the things he did, we study the motive for his life, the motive for his ministry, the motive for the teachings, the motive for the healings, the raising from the dead. We can make disciples out of followers. And what's the difference between a disciple and a follower? I've explained to us a follower can follow, but follow at a distance. In the heart, there is a distance. In the attitude, there is a distance. In the conduct, there is a distance. In terms of sacrifice, no sacrifice. Following at a distance. But a disciple is trained. A disciple is disciplined. A disciple is willing to embrace the task of discipleship. That pra- discipleship does not come easy. It, the same root word in the Greek that produces the word disciple is the same root word that produces discipline. And when we begin to think of discipline, sometimes we begin to think of punishment, punitive measures. But that's not just it. It's that you set the standard so high. You can imagine the way you discipline yourself when you have to do certain things. Maybe you want to go for a job interview. Maybe you want to go for an exam. And then normally you sleep by 8 p.m., you sleep by 9 p.m. But when you know you have this thing coming before you, you are going before a panel to sit for a job interview and you have been out of job for two years, if 8 p.m. will have to become 2 a.m. before you go to bed, so be it. Something makes you go the extra mile. Something makes you stretch yourself. Something makes you go beyond your comfort zone. So we need to study the life of Jesus so that these values are imbibed and developed in our lives. That we don't just remain as casual followers, following when it is convenient, when it's not convenient, let him go his way, let me go my way. What's all this thing? Did I kill Jesus? That is not the purpose why the Son of God will leave his prestigious and eternal position of glory and take up the, son, the form of flesh and take up the form of the Son of Man. He had something in mind. He had that as many as hear him, as many as observe him, we take a further interest not just to be a fan, but a follower. Not just being a follower, but becoming a disciple. You know, a fan, in the language of fan, fan club, I, I called a doctor, a relation of a leader in the house, some time ago, I think last week or the other week. And so I asked, how are you? How are your wife? I mean, how is your wife? How are your children? He said, oh, your fan club. They are all fine, sir. Your fan club. So I smiled in my fan club. I've not heard from the wife or the children, not in the last three or four years. So you can be a fan, just admiring, oh, I like that guy. You just keep it at the distance there. Oh, I admire, I like the way that guy talks. Oh, I like that, the way that guy does his thing. So the fan is the, is the farthest point of a real serious relationship. So a fan should become a follower. A follower should become a disciple. So we are saying here, we need to study Jesus so that we step up the level of relationship we have with him. We become disciples. We are willing to be instructed. Look at the language of um, Luke again, that verse 4. He said that you may know the certainty of the things wherein you are instructed. A young convert was being trained, was being taxed, was being stretched to become a disciple. Someone who will not only learn the ropes, someone who will represent the cause. So he says that you may know the certainty of the things in which you are instructed. So we need to challenge us from the life of Jesus that we should become disciples. People who are stretched, people who are taxed, people who are disciplined, people who are trained to follow the course through and through. Hallelujah. Hello, friends. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch.
you will never be the same. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a casual listener, a passive Christian. I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, think on these words you've heard today. And take them to heart. Search the scriptures if these things are so. And live by them. And live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself and demonstrate himself and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister, let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember, Jesus, the Son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him, may we follow him, may we worship and serve him. God bless you. Amen. Amen.